During your comments, you've mentioned that the $3.2 billion was the largest pension contribution made to this plan in history. It is because we have the largest unfunded liability in history. Uh, you referred to the rate of return, and not to get into the weeds about actuarial science, um, the rate of return or what you expect to get from a plan, it's also based on having 100 cents on a dollar. That's the actual method that we use by, by signing a Schedule B. In the private sector, that's what we do as actuaries to certify that a plan's fully funded or correctly funded. Very simple formula. You take the assets, you divide it by your rate of return, it comes up with a number. Well, let's just play that for a second. If you had, say, an average rate of return of 14% for your rolling five, and that's how your actual value of the assets and your rate of return are actually calculated right now and you only had 50% of your assets in the, in the plan, well, your rate of return relative to your liabilities is seven, not 14. So when you say that the move from 7.6 to seven, though I don't agree with it, believe me, um, is going in the wrong direction, I disagree. I would hope that you would continue on that path from 7.5 down to seven, because as you mentioned, um, there are a number of plans out there, public plans, that are at 7.5. And I can tell you the reason why is they are tremendously better funded than we are. And that's the reason why they're at 7.5. More than one thing goes into what a rate of return is. It's, a, it's an actual assumption. It's not just a rate of return. It looks at the amount of assets, payment stream, emerging liabilities, and again, won't get into the, into the weeds on what it is. But Let's get back to what we're actually doing right now. We're putting $3.2 billion in. That means we're put, not putting in, I might say about two point some billion not going in. Is that about right? About right, full 100% uh, funded would be $5.35 billion. Today. What happens though, what you don't put in goes into the unfunded liability. Then what happens? Multiply that by 1.75. Why? Because that's the interest that's going to be accruing on that unfunded liability. So by the time we get to the point that we're fully funded, say six or seven years from now, that unfunded, may, your, your full funding liability may not be 4.5, it may be six. Just if you just go with earning your actual rate of return. Define benefit plans work. And it, it incenses me that the, they've been played around with in the public sector as bad as they have. An actuarial, it's a very simple concept. You want to retire with 100000 you've got 10 years to get there, you put $10,000 away a year. Simple. You earn a certain rate of return, that's what you expect. You don't not pay into it. You don't not pay into it for nine years. You don't increase benefits by 9% retroactive to 1955. These are all things that have happened in the last 18 years. Both sides of the aisle, by the way. So. After being sworn in in April, or in, in August rather, you have an actuary here, and I'm going to be watching you guys like a hawk. 